Kentucky Route Zero is a weird video game. I mean, that's even if you want to call it a video game. It, it's more like art, but I'm already getting ahead of myself. The game starts with you following the character Conway. He's a delivery driver, and he delivers antiques for a small antique company that is seemingly going out of business. He is looking for an address to make his final delivery, but it looks like the address doesn't even exist. The game follows a 2D side-scroller genre, where every time you click, your character moves to that position. The way they choose to represent this is really interesting. Every time you click, you throw a horseshoe, as if progression is chance-based. Our characters are told that to get to the address, they need to take the Zero Highway, and pretty early on, we get the sense that the Zero Highway is not what it seems, it's probably not even a real highway, it comes across as more of an idea. One of the main focuses of gameplay in Kentucky Route Zero is the dialogue. It's most of the game and there's going to be a lot of reading, and initially the dialogue really bugged me. Characters often go on tangents or ignore your questions or give you weird Ridley responses, and as a viewer, especially one who's trying to analyze and figure out what's going on, it can be hard to know what to aim at. The computer tells us the address we're looking for doesn't exist, but it says if we want to have any chance of finding it, we'll need to get on the zero highway. And to do that, we'll have to meet a woman called Weaver. We get to Weaver's house, and it's a long walk up a hill, past a graveyard, into the house. It's small, sort of nearly a shack. Weaver asks for us to help set up her TV, and she tells us to really start paying attention. Conway looks at the TV, but the shape is strange. Beyond, outside, is a large barn, with two horses outside of it. On the front of the barn is a subtle spiral-like material, kind of like seashell. At this point, Conway stops zoning out. Weaver is gone. By the door, all of the pots and pans are dusty, and it leaves the player wondering even real? The characters in Kentucky Route Zero don't have faces. At best you get glasses or a moustache, but there's no real facial features. I'm not usually a fan of not having faces, uh, you see it pop up every now and again in amateur painting and it can come across as lazy, but I think Kentucky Route Zero at least pulls it off. The camera is so far away and most of what the characters are is expressed through dialogue that I think by maybe not having the distraction of faces, there's more room for the player to see themselves and the characters. In a scene, we yet again come across the horses. Kentucky as a state is known a little bit for its horses, but they are a really strong motif in this video game. Maybe it's something to do with the strength and beauty of them, freedom maybe. Maybe it's just because they're pretty, who knows. But the motifs don't stop there. Kentucky Route Zero has religious symbolisms, and with the burning bush it has mythological symbolisms. You come across two men pushing an airplane, and they have a lot of resemblance towards the myth of Sisyphus. When thinking about the visuals of Kentucky Route Zero, one might begin to question why even have the setting in Kentucky? Well, this place is a rural, small town, and that has the effect of helping to keep the visuals contained and grounded. So even when the player becomes in an introspective mood and is questioning what's real around them, they can still feel comforted by the fact that a town like this could exist. 
At the start of the game, the way that the characters talked really annoyed me, but as I've played, I realized that the characters are just saying what's on their mind, or how they feel. And while this is kind of weird for me, it's only because in our society, we have so many different layers of social etiquette. I've kind of realized that the characters just say what they want, and we're kind of the weird ones for not doing that. By playing the game, you realize how much the people of this town are struggling. Conway, on his quest to find the address, had to pay expensive medical bills. This, along with his alcoholism, caused him to sell his soul away at the end of Act 3 and arguably die. It is true that the game is an allegory for capitalism undermining the middle class, but of other media that I've seen do this, this game is the least pretentious and the least preachy. The game is subtle, it's sad, it's tragic. It doesn't try and fear manga, instead it shows the human cost of the way our society is changing. It's not fair to call Kentucky Route Zero just a video game. Really, it's doing something really new with video games as a format. Whether or not the game is good or bad, it's definitely in between literature, theatre, and film. It's not fun. You don't run around shooting bad guys, but it's expressive. It's art. And some people will enjoy it, and some people won't enjoy it. Some people will feel like they get it, and some people will feel like they don't get it. But I'd wager, if you play the game, you'll think about it. And when you stop playing, it might stick with you. Lost all my money, but it's too dark.